It, it's important that you, you bring this up because uh, although sex, you know, when you talk about prostate cancer and men being given estrogen to suppress their testosterone, thinking that's going to help them, but men with prostate cancer are now being given testosterone pellets by Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler, uh, who wrote the book Testosterone for Life, and he's finding that they get back their zest for life, that uh, they're able to have sex again, their 70 and 80 year old men are just feeling wonderful, and the cancer is not growing. See, testosterone's not your enemy. Testosterone fights cancer. So with your mother, it may seem counterproductive or strange or odd, but I wrote a paper uh, about four, three years ago because my cousin called me up crying and I, I heard her voicemail and I called her back. She was crying. She said, Nick, my, my cancer's come back. She goes, you know, the chemo and radiation didn't work and it's coming back. She had breast cancer and it was starting to spread. She said, but I don't want to do chemo and radiation again. I said, well, Laura, you know, if, if you're going to do this program, uh, number one, I'm going to ask you, please don't share my name with your oncologist. I don't want to get in trouble. Number two, monitor it with imaging, thermography preferably, so you're not exposed to mammogram the, the radiation because th that, that is concentrating a lot of toxins and radiation, which you're ironically going to stimulate breast cancer. So monitor it with proper uh, imaging. I guess, you know, they did some mammogram on her and they finally, she's convinced to start doing thermography. Um, but I even wrote a paper and posted it at the A4M and I got a lot of flack from doctors saying, how could you dare say that thermography is as good as mem um, mammography? Um, but I, I put her on a program and I wrote the whole experience and it was a, a 10 page document of the 50 steps, I, I simplified, simplified it to the five steps to reversing cancer, and I had to change it to saying reversing cancer to preventing or improving the immune system, because you can't say you cure cancer, reverse cancer, but within two years, uh, by the end of the year, Laura's tumors had disappeared, she had dropped 46 pounds, she's doing wonderfully, and um, the exciting thing is, although the doctors kept trying to press her to go on chemo and radiation, she stuck to her guns because she said, hey, how can I argue with results? You're telling me the tumors are gone and I'm using CBD, I'm using uh, Live Detox, Estroblock, I'm on a plant-based whole food nutrition diet. Uh, you know, I was told that animal foods have a high concentration of estrogens. You get 10,000 to a million times more estrogen from turkey, chicken, and pork and from fish than you do from plant proteins. How about beef? Is beef, beef is as bad? Yeah, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's range fed. The right. beef, it's an estrus, it's an estrus cycle animal. It has cycles, and the fact that it has cycles, it's very concentrated in estrogens, uh, and and it's not xenoestrogens. It's the actual beta estradiol that's very toxic to the human body. So we see that people's hormone disruption changes when they switch from an animal-based diet. Uh, and that's what Nathan Pritikin published his results. Prostate cancer patients were able to reverse prostate cancer and the prostate cancer cells disappeared by switching to uh, beans and peas and rice and, and a Mediterranean-like, uh, Greek-like, um, you know, Asian-like diet. And in these individuals who went to a plant-based diet, the cancer disappeared. But see, I realize that as people age, it's not enough just to change the diet. You have to remove the source of the toxin, the estrogens and the xenoestrogens, but you have to build up the immune system. So you have to add protein peptides. You have to add the estrogen clearance herbs. You have to restore the testosterone and restore growth hormone because these hormones, when you're youngest, you have little or no risk of cancer. When you get older, you're a thousand times more likely to develop cancer when your hormones decrease. So remember, it's your hormones that build up your immune system and can help reverse cancer. So this brings me then also to another thing. You said don't give your oncologist my name. So everything you just told me is stuff that allopathic Western, you know, our traditional medicine of, of today, our professional medicine, our uh, pharma, big pharma driven medicine um, would not approve of, right? 
Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm a lifestyle medicine expert. I'm an anti-aging expert. I'm an immortality expert. And I've had agents. I know they were agents because they'd come into my office and they'd lean forward and they'd go, and you cure cancer? Oh and you'd see a little microphone and you cure cancer? And I said, no, I don't cure cancer. I help people build up their immune system. I help give them the God-given right to eat properly, to exercise, to have the right thoughts. I introduce them to herbs and supplements. And if their body heals itself, God bless them. I, I, I had nothing to do with it. I have them sign a release that I'm not your medical doctor. I'm not diagnosing you. I'm only guiding you to build up your body. Because if I tell you not to use chemo or radiation, I can be put in jail. And I prefer to stay free. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, it's been a, a struggle the whole time because I really didn't know too much about the estrogen or you know the whole hormonal component, although it was introduced almost immediately because the first drug that my mother was given was aromasin, which basically stops all hormones from happening. It stops aromatase in its tracks completely. It's right. Just, so yeah, when I asked uh, her doctor, what is that? Is that to stop the estrogen? Is it, he's like, no, it's to stop everything. I was like, hmm, that can't be good. And I mean, yeah, of course her skin dried out and she just, you know, it, it was, uh, it was incredible. She just, her skin just became so dry. I've never seen anything like it. And I just thought this is, and that was, it was a tiny little pill that she took every day. And, um, you know, it just all seems horrible and it, it's just nothing I want to go through. And I, it was horrible to have to, to see my mother going through it. And I know that, you know, one out of every three women will be, will be diagnosed with cancer. One out of every two men will be diagnosed with cancer. One about, out of every two diagnosed with cancer will die of cancer in the United States. It's projected to double this, this, this trajectory that we're on. It's, it's projected to double by 2050. Um, so how this can be withheld, how the information that you, um, that you know can be withheld from, from cancer patients and, and just from, from regular you know it's hormones are so important to, to life um it's, it's a crime it's really a crime that that you have to protect yourself from from a legal a, a attack the way you, you you do when all you're doing well is I, my doctor colleagues dr sangita patty in florida dr mitch Gen in florida dr learen keneally here in california uh, in uh, uh, irvine area um, we all, when we talk to cancer patients, we can only say we're helping to build up your immune system. If we even say we're helping you with your cancer and we're telling you that chemotherapy, when a Canadian study was done and they asked the Canadian doctors and they didn't disclose the names of doctors so they could openly answer the questionnaire and they said, if a patient came to you and had cancer, would you prescribe chemo and radiation, chemotherapy and radiation? They said, absolutely, 100% of the the cases they said they would right. but then they said a more telling question if you prescribed um, if you had cancer yourself or your wife or your daughter or your son had cancer would you prescribe chemo or radiation and a shocking nearly 50 percent said no and of the hospital workers 68 percent said no because they saw the end result of chemo and radiation and what you have to realize is you're shrinking the tumor but there's there's stem cells inside the cancer that come back with a vengeance. You're only shrinking the tumor, but it comes back uh, in a more, much like with antibiotics, how you get rid of certain microbes, but it comes back more virulent. It yeah. alters or changes. I, I saw it so, firsthand. I saw it happen. It happened with my mother, and I was like, stop this, you know, crazy thing. I want to get off. Like, I, But, you know, my stepfather was the president of a pharmaceutical company, um, and... There was really, you know, he was doing what medicine said, and I, you know, I tried, and that's why it only started out with aromasin. It could have started out with, she was ready to get one of those, you know, like a hole put in her chest to, to get pumped with chemo that way. I mean, she never had that done, thank goodness. But Wait, if you... If you go back to the Gerson therapy and you go to drday.com, D-R-D-A-Y.com, yeah. and in my paper that I wrote that I'd be happy to make available to your people, um, uh, the, the paper that helped Laura reverse her cancer, uh, or excuse me, improve her immune system. Right. <laughs> uh, when, we, when, we, uh, when we talk about these, these approaches, Dr. Lodi, 
uh, moved from Arizona. He's now in Thailand. But he talks about a raw whole foods diet. See, we talk about building up the body. Right. See, I think the better approach is not tear the body down. You're already beaten up with cancer. Yeah. Why would you tear the body down with chemo and radiation? Mm -hmm. And even the radiation can cause other forms of cancer later. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that if you want to prolong the life? You, you, you shrink the tumor, but you lose the patient.